You probably know all about Thor's hammer Mjolnir, and that only those who are worthy can wield it. Though they haven't really explored the possibility much in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, there have been several characters in the comics who were, at one time or another, worthy of wielding the power of Thor. Whoever holds this hammer, if he be worthy, shall possess the power of Thor. Loki. It would take some insane weirdness and arcane trickery for Loki to wield Mjolnir, but when you're talking about comics, that kind of goes without saying. During the 2014 X-Men Avengers crossover event Axis, several members of the team were hit with an inversion spell which converted good to evil and vice versa, including Thor and Loki. With their roles now reversed, Loki becomes a hero and Thor becomes a villain with a lot of mess to clean up. Loki, Agent of Asgard number 9, continues this story, revealing that Mjolnir, which had rejected evil Thor for being, well, evil, chose good Loki as its new champion so that he could wield it against his brother. Of course, all good and evil things must come to an end. Once the spell was lifted, Loki once again returned to his evil, unworthy ways. Captain America in the films, Steve Rogers couldn't move Mjolnir more than a little bit, but in comics, Cap has grabbed the hammer multiple times over. In Thor number 390, Avengers Island comes under attack, and the invading minions of Grog subdue most of the team. When Thor is separated from Mjolnir, Cap grabs the hammer and wields it for a short time before returning it to Thor. This marked the first time a human could lift the hammer, and was also used as a plot device. Cap was in a bad place with the Avengers at the time, but his being able to pick up Mjolnir convinced Thor he was a worthy man who could be trusted. But seriously, if Steve Steve Rogers isn't worthy of the power of Thor, who is? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Beta Ray Bill. Every so often, comics need to shake things up, and the introduction of the horse-faced Beta Ray Bill in Thor number 337 was such a big change that it even shattered the logo on the cover and created a full-on paradox in the Marvel Universe. Could there be more than one Thor? When an alien fleet was detected by S.H.I.E.L.D., Thor went to investigate and was mistaken for an attacker by Bill, a cyborg tasked with defending his people, the Corbinites, as they journeyed to a new galaxy. During their fight, Thor loses control of Mjolnir. If you read the comics way back when, you may recall that Thor turned back into his human alter ego, the puny Donald Blake, if he was separated from his hammer for 60 seconds. That happened here, and with Blake posing no threat, Bill picked up the hammer and was immediately transformed into the all-new Thor. Odin sensed what was going on and zapped the two Thors over to Asgard to address the whole two worthy wielders problem. After a fight to determine who was truly the most worthy, Odin then created a new hammer for Bill called Stormbreaker. Wonder Woman The idea of characters being worthy enough to lift Mjolnir isn't actually limited to a single reality. In 1996, during the DC vs. Marvel crossover, Wonder Woman stumbled across Thor's hammer and hefted it almost effortlessly, adding the God of Thunder's power to her own, and getting a new costume that really reminds you that this thing was published in the mid-90s. However, Wonder Woman never actually fought Thor in the story. She was matched up against Storm of the X-Men, while Thor took on Captain Marvel, better known today as Shazam. It makes sense, considering that Storm was easily Marvel's most popular and prominent female character, and even won the fan vote that determined the outcome of the series. Unfortunately, it also made the momentous occasion of Wonder Woman lifting Thor's hammer feel like an afterthought. After swinging it around for a couple of panels, Wonder Woman dropped the hammer so that she could battle Storm in a fair fight, putting herself in a disadvantage in a way that gave DC an easy excuse for having one of their most popular characters take the loss. Superman if Wonder Woman's hammer time suffered from being an afterthought, Superman's turn at wielding the power of Thor in JLA Avengers was exactly the kind of climactic moment it should have been. Two issues after they fought each other in a knockdown, drag-out brawl, Superman and Thor had earned each other's trust, just in time for the Avengers and the Justice League to get into a full-on team-up. As Thor was overwhelmed by enemies from both universes, he threw Mjolnir to Superman, who was already carrying Captain America's shield. Armed with the power of Thor, Superman shattered an entire fortress in a single blow. After the story's final battle, however, Superman found himself unable to lift it, with Thor casually explaining that Odin must have lifted the enchantment for a special one-time-only emergency. Superman might have been worthy, but let's be real, that's the sort of thing that you can only really do once. Eric Masterson in the early 90s, Thor got a new identity, a dude named Eric Masterson, a run-of-the-mill architect who happened upon a battle between the mighty Thor and an enemy named the Mongoose. While the Mongoose's name wasn't very threatening, the laser weapon he wielded against Thor was. Thor was knocked down and lost his grip on Mjolnir. With Mongoose standing ready to kill the Asgardian, Masterson ran into the fray, 
grabbed the hammer and wielded it against Mongoose, who quickly dispatched and nearly killed him. With Masterson near death, Thor begged Odin to save his life, given his obvious worthiness and heroism. Instead, Odin bonds Masterson to Thor in the same manner he was bonded to Donald Blake back in the day. What emerges is the ponytail wielding Thor for a new age. Eventually, Odin separated Masterson from Thor, but after deciding he should continue to possess godlike power, he created a new weapon called Thunderstrike, a mace for him to use. Masterson names himself after his new toy and goes off on his own adventures, but he's eventually killed off and sent to an afterlife of his own by Odin, who clearly can't make up his mind about anything. Jane Foster in 2016, it was time to welcome yet another new Thor to the Marvel Universe. After decades of stories that had seen Thor killed, cloned, reborn, and more, Don Blake's girlfriend and longtime Thor ally Jane Foster picks up Mjolnir and becomes the new Thor, Goddess of Thunder. She even alters the inscription on the hammer to read, Whosoever holds this hammer, if she be worthy, shall possess the power of Thor. When this goes down, the original God of Thunder tries to reclaim his hammer and title. After he fails, he relinquishes the name of Thor and takes on the title of Odin's son, adopting a new weapon and a cool prosthetic arm to continue a superhero lifestyle. Meanwhile, the newly crowned Goddess of Thunder faces new challenges and joins the Avengers, but maintains her secret identity. Foster now has all of Thor's powers with no limitations, and also has demonstrated a unique method of control over Mjolnir that the old Thor never achieved. She can alter the hammer's velocity and trajectory in mid-throw, and can even cause it to spin around an enemy at great speed, trapping them. Sounds pretty worthy, don't you think? Lego Stan Lee Did it work? Yes, Stan the Man has indeed lifted the hammer of Thor, but not in the comics or movies. It was in the LEGO Marvel Avengers video game, because of course it was. While dusting in the Avengers penthouse in the aftermath of the battle with Ultron, Stan Lee's LEGO counterpart casually picks up Thor's hammer so he can get all the dust beneath it. When he realizes what he's holding, he quickly drops the hammer and whistles his way off screen. Too bad we never got to see him really use the thing. Thanks for watching. Click the grunge icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel, plus check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.